Hello everyone, this is your host TrevCL, and welcome to another Pokemon Challenge video. As promised from last week, today we are here to take on the Emerald Kaizo Elite Four once again, this time using only Pokemon from the Johto region. Using only Johto Pokemon certainly puts me in an interesting situation. There's way less options available than in Kanto. Additionally, the options that are available are less than stellar for sure. Regardless, I was able to put together a solid team of six, and here they are. Leading off the squad is Battleship, the Impish Fortress. With Shell Armor, I can never get crit, allowing me to get off many layers of spikes should I need them. Holding the Citrus Berry, I'm running with Dual Stab and the ever-useful Explosion. You can never go without the Pseudo in these types of challenges, so of course Godzilla the Tyranitar is next on the squad. Tyranitar makes a great mix attacker, so I went with a brave nature. In addition to its already great bulk, Intimidate makes it a great pivot in situations where I need to get a free switch into another teammate. The Hard Stone allows for an already buffed Ancient Power to hit even harder, and rounding out the set is Stab Crunch, Ice Beam, and my one use of the Earthquake TM. All Kaizo E4 runs need a fast mon that can outspeed the Kaizo League, and that's just what Dracula the Crobat is here to do. I don't even need a plus speed nature to do so thanks to the badge boost, so naughty nature it is. Not only are Crobat and Tyranitar similar in sharing mixed attacking nature, but also in the fact that Crobat is holding the sharp beak to boost one of its stabs. Air Slash takes advantage of that buffed power, alongside having double poison stab and heat wave for coverage. While I like my team so far, I definitely knew I was bodied by Glacia, so I took advantage of another buffed Pokemon. Littlefoot the Thick Fat Meganium. Resisting water attacks and now being neutral to ice, Meganium is going to be a star player in that fight. Boosting it even further with a calm nature and holding the Shell Bell for even more recovery options, Meganium looks quite hard to kill. Its moveset consists of Triple Grass Stab, each fulfilling a specific role, and Safeguard for team support. Why have one counter for Glacia when you could have two? Thousand. This Slowkeen is even more especially bulky than Meganium and completely resists both Glacia's ice and water attacks. I went with the Citrus Berry here to increase my ability to switch in just that much more, and combined with this special wall actually having reliable recovery and slack off, I doubt any special attacks will be burning it down anytime soon. Psychic gives me a strong stab, Ice Beam is great for Drake's Dragons, and while every Pokemon in the league holds a Lumberry, 2000's bulk allows it to survive enough to get off two yawns in most situations. One issue with my five mons so far is outside of Crobat, nothing else has very much speed at all. Also, all special attacks on my team are either coming from mixed attackers or defensive Pokemon. So why not bring in the most buff Johto Pokemon in Emerald Kaizo, Scooby the Modest Houndoom. Now sporting 130 special attack and 110 speed, Houndoom is an absolute menace. I went with Modest over Timid due to the sheer damage it can deal with its dual stabs, allowing it to be the Steven and Phoebe killer on my team. Intimidate slightly fixes its horrible defense, and Black Glasses boosts its great dark type moves. Speaking of moves, I'm using solely its dual stabs, consisting of Crunch, Pursuit, Flamethrower, and Overheat. With the team builder over with, it's on to Sydney for the first battle of the Emerald Kaizo Elite 4 Johto only challenge. His lead Sableye is usually a pain to deal with, but today I flipped the script on him. Fortress absolutely walls his set, so after getting up two layers of spikes, we chip at each other's health. Thanks to a flash cannon defense drop, my battleship is the victor, leading to Alakazam. I'm expecting a fire punch, so Scooby is the obvious choice. This works out fantastically as apparently my fortress was in range of Psychic, giving me a completely safe switch in. HP Water does well over half, but Crunch does much more, as in comes his Tauros. I don't feel safe switching into anything here, so I allow my Houndoom to go down. After using Tyranitar as a pivot to drop his attack, I safely switch into Crobat for what I thought was an easy 1v1, but crits tended to rail those trains of thought. Here's where preserving my fortress comes into play, as Shell Armor guarantees my survival. And after bringing down his Raging Bull, Sydney's got a Houndoom of his own. Battleship has done its job, and then some, so I allow Houndoom to sink my ship so to speak, and bring in the always durable Godzilla. Not only can I easily tank a hidden power and respond back with the super effective ancient power, but Sydney's follow-up Jolteon also can't do much to me, 
this time going down to the super effective Earthquake. Down to just his Machamp, I want to keep Titar around for Intimidate shenanigans, so I go into Meganium. While the exchange works out initially, Littlefoot taking minimal damage from an Earthquake, Sydney again turns the table with an untimely superpower crit. If he crits my Slow King with HP Ghost, it's over. Thankfully, I avoid the third crit of the battle, and now it's time to make my way to Phoebe. I wasn't lying in my last video when I said mistaking Phoebe's lead Gengar with Dusclops would be a common occurrence in this miniseries, as I tried to again get up a layer of spikes. I thought her Gengar might have Fire Punch, so I decided to play it safe with Tyranitar, as that was the best play. Not the case as I dodge an incoming Hypnosis. Godzilla dodges yet another one and Ancient Power wipes away 75% of Gengar's HP. I thought a Destiny Bond might be coming, so I used Houndoom as a pivot, then switched into Crobat on an unfortunately timed Thunderbolt. I just do barely survive, and can finally end this annoyance with Air Slash. Phoebe then makes an interesting play, choosing to go into Ludicolo. This I do not mind at all, with Poison Fane dispatching of it in one hit. Her Gardevoir stakes Dracula finally, but not before taking two massive air slashes thanks to the first one flinching. Scooby has a strong matchup against the rest of her team, and right away she brings in her RNG abusing Dusclops. Black Glass's boosted crunch nearly brings it down to red as it starts to set up double teams. Somehow, one double team is more effective than two or three of them, as while I miss two straight crunches at plus one evasion, I hit two straight afterwards at plus two and plus three evasion respectively. Weird RNG aside, her second to last Pokemon is her Hypnosis Crobat. We exchange big hits, and I decide to save Houndoom for Sableye, switching out into Tyranitar. Phoebe has Sleep Luck on her side this time, hitting the first Hypnosis. Thanks to my Intimidate, however, her Hidden Power Ground does basically nothing at all to my tanky Tyranitar. It's not a matter of if I'll wake up, but when I'll wake up. At 112 HP, I do wake up, and Ancient Power not only KOs Crobat, it gives me an Omni Boost. With this, my victory is secured, and after getting off massive damage on her Sableye and going down to Brick Break, Houndoom can finish it off with an Overheat and secure a 3-0 victory. Glacia will always be a tough battle, even with my counters ready to go. Third battle in a row I go for the Fortress lead, though this time I'm only able to get one spike off before going down. I don't have any great options for this Glalie, as I'm wary of putting it into explosion territory and wiping out one of my two counters. Tyranitar can take a Weather Ball, but doesn't end up needing to thanks to Glacia opting for spikes instead. I'll have to be careful with switches, is what I thought, but Ancient Power had other ideas. I take out the Falling Regice with a boosted AP and can easily live a drill run from Dugon, racking up another kill. Godzilla's Rampage doesn't stop there, as Lapras comes out. Another lamb for the slaughter. My fun is finally cut short as while I do have the plus one special defense boost, that's not enough for a rain boosted super effective water spout from the insanely buffed EK Waylord. This does give me a great matchup selection for her last mon, Swampert, allowing Meganium to come in, finish off the Waylord, easily live the ancient power, and Oko back with Giga Drain. Imagine nearly sweeping EK Glacia with a slow ass rock type. With Drake's Latios holding the Soul Dew, I knew Houndoom's Crunch has absolutely no chance of taking it out. Since Meganium is dead weight in this battle anyways, I use it for Draco Recoil and Petal Dance Chip. To show how broken Soul Dew is in this game, that's still not enough, and this battle is off to the worst start imaginable. On the double down, I send in Fortress while Drake sends in Latios. The HP fire is incredibly predictable, so I go into Titar. Luck swings in my favor as Drake goes for a Calm Mind, and Godzilla responds back with a monstrous AP crit. In comes Salamence with the most predictable Earthquake ever. Crobat is not only immune, but then deals with Salamence the same way it did Phoebe's Gardevoir. Differences is that this time, it lives, allowing me to get some great damage off on Kingdra. While everything looks to be in my favor for the first time, the tides of battle once again shift thanks to Drake getting a key critical hit of his own. This leaves my Slow King very low, and I'm forced to sack it to his own Tyranitar's HP bug. No big deal though, as his Tyranitar has no way to take on Fortress 1v1. Even a plus one Ancient Power deals less than half. Dragonite also tries to use Fortress to set up, but I'm finally able to get off a boom in this challenge. So now it's time for the final battle against champion Steven Stone. 
When I said in the team builder that Houndoom was the Steven killer, I really meant it. Overheap melts his lead Metagross, so in comes his brick-breaking Adamant Mewtwo. My plan is to sack off Little Root for damage, as once again it's dead weight in this fight. Afterwards, I intimidate Pivot between Tyranitar and Slowking until I feel Houndoom can live Shadow Ball plus Brick Brick. After just narrowly doing so, in comes the always terrifying Deoxys attack. Crobat can safely switch in most of the time, and after doing so on a Fire Punch, completes its main role of outspeeding and okoing Deoxys. Dracula's Reign of Terror is just beginning, as it flinches and to it KOs the following Starmie. Even Aerodactyl flinches once, before ending Crobat with a single Sky Attack. Easy pickings for Tyranitar, however, as Intimidate allows it to sponge an Earthquake and Ancient Power takes down the arrow. Steven's last is his Jirachi. Somehow, despite the lack of Intimidate, Tyranitar lives the Meteor Mash on just 2 HP. EQ never had a chance of killing without a crit, but that's all the damage Houndoom needed. Securing the 3-0 victory with one last Flamethrower, I have beaten the Kaizo League using only Johto Pokemon with the additional bonus of not resetting one single time. Despite the much lower power level compared to the Kanto team, this Johto squad gelled together very well without suffering a single loss against any member of the Elite Four. Next week, we'll be finding out if Emerald Kaizo's very own finest, the Hoenn region, can repeat that same feat. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at the same time, same place, in the next upload. Peace!